You're watching NTN News. Vice President Goodluck Jonathan says the task of rebuilding the economy and providing public infrastructure will not be achieved if profligacy and discretionary practices are not wiped out. He was speaking at an interactive forum with contractors and consultants to the Bureau of Public Procurement. The forum also provided clarifications on who issues payment certificates. State House correspondent Ima Okundo reports. Vice President Jonathan drew attention to President Umaru Musa Yaradwa's directive to all federal government ministries, departments and agencies to fully implement Budget 2008 and in line with the Public Procurement Act which spells out procedures for awarding contracts and stiff penalties in case of default and stressed that contractors and consultants must be aware that the realization of the administration's visioning through the seven-point agenda underscores need, competence and transparency. To that effect, he said there are no shortcuts to excellence, integrity, moral uprightness, honor, and professionalism. All contractors and consultants that work for government must be ready and willing to be part of the moving trail to accountability, efficiency, and effective service delivery. It is the commitment of governments to ensure that cases of diversion of public funds through questionable contract procedures are completely eliminated. Again, the backdrop of the establishment of procurement officers KEDA in federal government departments, efficient service delivery is expected from them. The law in say that the BPP, the Bureau of Procurement, must not be involved in, in the implementation function, as was the case in the past. Consequently, the Bureau no longer issues certificates for payments. Therefore, no MDNH will soon use due process as excuse for non-payment of duly certified valuation certificates. The Bureau will continue to develop, regulate, update, supervise and promote relevant policy guidelines. In the State House, Ima Okondo. A former group managing director of the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, Funsho Kupolokun, says allocation of blocks by the Department of Petroleum Resources in the year 2000 bid were evenly spread among operators in good faith. He told the ad hoc committee, he told the ad hoc committee hearing on NNPC that such allocation should not be seen as selective. Waziri Zayanu now reports. Speaking in his capacity as a former special advisor to the then president, Mr. Funsho Pokolokun said the logic behind such allocation was to prevent few powerful companies from getting multiple blocks at the detriment of others. The committee members questioned why the system allowed operators bid in multiple rounds. The committee also observed that going by section 147 of the Nigerian constitution, the office of the special advisor to the president was not created by law but by convenience. Committee chairman Igo Aguma observed that out of the 22 blocks offered in 2000, only 10 were awarded, pointing out that only $222 million was collected instead of the $627.8 million expected from the bid. The outstanding $248 million is yet to be accounted for. A brief argument ensued between Fusha Pokolokun and another former director of the DPR, Peter Achebe, on certain instructions issued on the 2000 bid. There has never been a time he passed on instruction from upstairs to us that we neglected or refused to comply. Let DPR come here and say with the amount that I asked them to do what, <coughs> what they do not believe in. And let Nigerians hear that. Later, former special advisor on petroleum to the then president, Dr. Rwanda Lukman, maintained that the 2000 bid followed government approved guidelines of the then administration. I can assure you that. Uh, we, we followed we followed the procedure uh, as best as we can under the circumstances. The committee will receive petitions at Thursday's hearing from the House of Representatives and Mozilla Zayan. Shell Petroleum Development Company, SPDC, says the Zaran Ubie gas project in Bayasa State would fast track the nation's power aspiration when completed. The managing director Mr. Musu Sumonu gave the indication when he conducted the Bayasa State Governor, Mr. Timmy Presiva, on guided tour of the project. Ikechukoha completes the story.
But a Nubia gas project is described by oil and gas experts as one of the largest gas development projects in Nigeria, with the overall objective of maintaining gas supply to LNG train 1 to 6. The project, which is about 50% completed, is expected to supply in excess 3 trillion standard cubic feet of gas under the first phase, while a laid down provision for future infrastructure development of the second phase. SPDC Managing Director said in addition to reducing gas flaring and providing gas for both domestic use and exports, the project will also support the nation's power program by feeding the gas plants in Bias and other Niger Delta states. However, he lamented that the challenges of funding may affect the target date of delivery and request the governor of Bias State to help discuss the issue with the presidency. Grab this opportunity to appeal to His Excellency to please help us lobby for funding of this project. This project has still too long on the drawing board. The only reason we are able to continue is because the IOCs are funding it. Governor Tibepre Silva expressed satisfaction with progress of were done so far and asked SPDC to explore the possibility of commercial partnership with other multinational companies. Together, I believe we are partners in the development, not only of this state but of the country. And uh, we must now begin to cooperate uh, even better than we, we, we ever did. He expressed by State government willingness to assist SPDC in the realization of the project which he noted can also lay the foundation for the future development of the area by providing employment and empowerment to the people. In Port Harcourt, Ike Chuku Oha. You're watching NTA News. Assembly crisis in Asaba Delta State resolved. That's the news coming from our Benin Network Center. Let's now join Phil for this and more. Hello, Phil. It's good to see you. Hello Eugenia, it's good to see you too. The suspended former Speaker of the Delta State House of Assembly, Dr. Olisa Imegu, has resumed, bringing to an end the crisis in the House. Thelma Eliogu has details. The former speaker who said he was delighted to be part of the legislative family once again after his suspension acknowledged the fact that he missed his interaction with his constituency which he represents. He noted that it was a good experience having been speaker. So there is a tendency for those who are in governance, those who are always leaders, to forget their roots. Since the suspension, I have gone back to my roots. I'm able to identify again, once again, reconnect with my people. The House consisted a committee to reconcile him and the House. The committee, headed by the Majority Leader, Honorable Apodio Gagayamese, came out with a recommendation requesting Dr. Imegu to withdraw the case from the court as one of the conditions for lifting his suspension. Dr. Imegu was impeached on the 22nd of April this year amidst controversy which resulted to physical combat. Saima Eliog in Asaba. The Nigeria Customs Service in Edo State has made another seizure of contraband. Since this time are different imported lace fabrics running into millions of naira. The controller federal operations on Seaport Harcourt, Dr. Hussein Kangiwa, showed the seized items to newsmen in Benin City, as we hear from Felix Opute. The trailer with registration number Lagos XG233KRB carrying the said contraband was impounded on Benin or Lagos Road. It was gathered that the vehicle was heading for Onisha, Anabra State from Lagos. The lace materials were reportedly concealed in the trailer with some cartons of drugs. Dr. Kangiwa said the culprits will be charged to court for smuggling possession and carrying of contraband. He also responded to questions about what is done with these seized items at the end of the day. Every time we seized textile like lace materials and the second clothing and the rest, we don't, we don't, there is no allocation for that. It's directly destroyed by fire. The driver of the trailer, Mr. Lukman Bolaji, said he was traveling to Anisha to deliver the items when he was arrested. The driver is being detained 
while the owners of the contraband are being awaited by the customs service. Felix Opute in Benin.